Hello and welcome to another video looking at our little micro rat puzzle and uh, our physics enabled ball shaped robot called Bumper. Uh, now, as we saw in the previous video, uh, this is a puzzle where the maze, which is physically modeled, and so our little robot Bumper has some weight to it and those walls are solid. And in this video, we're going to look at how to make Bumper reliably turn to a particular angle. So we are going to be doing a function that is called turn two, and it takes an angle in radians, and that is the angle that we want Bumper to turn to. Uh, and it would help if I didn't put a typo in the function. And so we would like, for instance, so this is in radians, and so uh, the y-axis positive is downwards, which is common for uh, graphic situations. Actually, if you see things uh, graphed a lot, people put the positive y-axis up the page, but uh, graphics coordinates tend to have the positive y-axis down uh, the page. Uh, OK, so we'd like to, for instance, be able to make him turn to this direction, which would be uh, math uh, dot pi divided by 2, because this is measured in radians. Uh, and so if we go turn to math dot pi divided by 2, uh, of course, that's not going to do anything just yet, because I haven't written the body of the function. OK, now, Bumper knows what its current heading is. So the first thing we can say is let us find out uh, what the difference between where we are facing and where we want to be facing is. And so we can say, well, let's let that be uh, the angle we want to turn to minus our current heading. We could, if we wanted, just say, all right, let's just print that out. And so we're not doing any turning, but we can just see that we're getting it. And so, OK, we're wanting to turn about 1.57 radians. Now, what we could say is, because uh, we're at the moment we're doing this to turn clockwise, uh, we could say, well, if that's bigger than zero, is bigger than zero, then I would like to turn in the right direction. So I would like to set my left power to be one, and I'd like to set my right power uh, to be minus one. Otherwise, I would like to set that to zero, set right power of zero. OK, this, is, this isn't going to work straight away. This is going to go constantly spinning because we've only done the check once. We've said, well, if we started out uh, needing to turn clockwise, let's uh, set the motors going and let's exit. Hmm, not so good. We're going to need some kind of a loop. Uh, that's actually going to stop us from turning. OK, so let's reset that. But let, let's hang on to some of this. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is let's start putting this into a uh, let's put it into a do while loop, shall we? Uh, let's declare up the top, let delta equal zero, just so we've declared the variable. And then let's have a do loop. And in that do loop, let us say that the delta that we actually want to look at is the difference between where we're facing and where we want to be facing. And then let's uh, do the same thing. And now we need a condition on our uh, on exiting. And so let's, for the moment, let's say that we do that while delta is bigger than zero. This still isn't going to work, but it's uh, it's not going to work for um, different reasons. Okay. So let's reset that and let's set that playing. And there we go. This is one of the problems that we hit. So we want to turn down here. And sure enough, it turns and it turns the motors off. But this has got a bit of mass. It's got a bit of inertia. And so the robot still just keeps turning and it's facing in slightly the wrong direction. And so this is where we're going to need to have a little bit of control in how we do it. And one of the things we can do is we can say, well, OK, at the moment, I've only considered turning clockwise. Um, I'd need to consider turning anti-clockwise anyway. So what if we change it so that if we overshoot, we turn back again? And so let us now say, OK, what we're going to do in here uh, is go while math.abs of delta is bigger than zero. Um, this is going to cause us a pro our next problem in a moment. Um, but so what we're going to say is 
uh, at the end, so once we've come out of that loop, then left power and right power can go to zero because now we're facing in the right direction. Uh, but beforehand, well, we could be um, we 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 could be uh, facing too far to the right, or we could be facing too far to the left. So we'll need to consider uh, both of these. So uh, let's put in one for correcting back again. Uh, that kind of goes the other way around. And well, let's also just say that we only really want to do that um, if uh, if math dot abs of delta uh, is bigger than zero, uh, because otherwise, otherwise we'd like to turn the motors off. Okay, oops, there we go. Let's tab those in and put an else. And now let me grab these that I've put down here and pop these back in here. Sorry, that was possibly a slightly woolly explanation. So let me talk through that code. Uh, what I've said um, is, first of all, we assume that there's no change in direction just to declare the variable. Then inside our loop, we get the difference between where we're facing and where we want to be facing. Uh, and well, if the, the absolute value of that, so ignoring any negative signs, is bigger than zero. So if there is a difference, then if we need to turn uh, clockwise, we're going to set the motors this way. And if we need to turn anti-clockwise, uh, we're going to set the, uh, the motors in the other direction. And otherwise, if we're facing the way we want, we're going to turn the motors off. And we're going to keep looping around this until we're facing the way that we want. Now, this isn't going to work, but we're going to see uh, another reason why this isn't going to work. So let's clear that and let's press play. And it just keeps oscillating. It turns, it overshoots, it corrects back, it overshoots, it turn, uh, corrects back again, it overshoots, it corrects back again, it overshoots. And it is just going to keep on oscillating like that. Uh, now, one of the reasons for this uh, is that our heading is a floating point number. It's a decimal that can have an awful lot of digits after the decimal point. The chances of two of those being exactly the same are really quite low. It can be off by 0 0.00000000001 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 and it will say, no, it's not, it's not equal, so it's either bigger than or less than, and keep trying to correct. Uh, really hard to hit the target. So the first change I'm going to do is I'm going to say const, uh, and I'm just going to call this epsilon, uh, kind of an error um, that we're going to allow. And I'm going to say that we are allowed a difference of, let's go with 0 0.01 radians. And so now, instead of seeing if this is greater than zero, if it's exactly the right heading, I'm going to say, is it close enough? And again, I'm going to have to loop down here and say, well, we're only going to do that loop uh, until it was close enough. So that should hopefully get rid of some of that uh, infinite oscillation uh, from the fact that we were expecting the heading to be perfectly precise and floating point numbers, decimal numbers are really exactly the same if you've got a lot of d uh, digits after the decimal point. All right. And so now you can see that it doesn't do the infinite loop, but we still have a little bit of a problem. Uh, so one of the problems we've got now is that uh, although it ends up doing its check and it's facing the right way, uh, its momentum still carries it slightly in the wrong direction. Uh, so I'm going to do two things to correct this. One of them is I'm going to add a certain amount of damping. Rather than having the motors full on all the way up to the mark uh, and then all full on in the other direction, I'm going to let the power to the motors kind of come down a bit, come off the power on the motor as we start getting close to the target. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to, well, let, let's do this one first, uh, is let's not exit this while loop if we've still got too much angular momentum. So let's say uh, while uh, the position was too far out or um, maths.abs of our get angular velocity. So or if we were still traveling a bit fast and we we're likely to be a bit out in a moment. Uh, so if that's greater than, shall we give that um, 
0.05. Let's just give that a slightly different number. OK, so let's just do that one. And so you can now see that we get a few more uh, oscillations. Oops, sorry. Let me clear that. I had a typo. And so that's uh, maybe maybe our maybe maybe let's just uh, bring that down to 0.1 as well. OK, and so we get quite a few more oscillations, but then it's cl facing closer to the right direction uh, in the end. But let's add that damping so that we can uh, we can get this to work a little bit better. So rather than setting these to one and minus one, I would like to set them to some value. Let's call it V. Um, that is going to um, be smaller when we're closer to the target. So let's go let V equals. Well, I tell you what, let's take um, that uh, math dot abs of the uh, delta because that is going to um, that is going to come down when we're within a radian of the target. So that's going to start uh, slowing down from about here. And uh, well, it, unfortunately, though, it starts above one and our power only really goes up to up to one. So let's go math dot and I want the smaller of one or our distance from the target. And so that now is going to be a number that is between zero and a maximum of one. And uh, it c comes down the closer we are to the direction that we want to be facing. And so now I'm just going to change these to V and minus V, minus V and V. And let's reset that and let's run it. And now we very quickly end up facing pretty accurately the way we want to go. And to show this, because uh, this goes all the way around to 2 pi and we can kind of wind it up, wind it up. Uh, let's change that. So instead of just trying to face down here and go straight ahead, let's try and do a full 360 and then turn the power on and see if we make it all the way to the end. And so let's now go set left power of 1 and set right power of 1 having turned uh, uh, 2 pi, so a full circle. And so let's do that. It turns all the way around and it goes straight ahead. And you can see it deviates a little bit. We do have, you know, a certain amount of error that we've allowed, but it hasn't hit the walls even in traveling the full length of a maze. And so that looks like a pretty good turn function to control this robot to turn. Uh, let's test it going the other way. Uh, so let's reset that and see if we turn anti-clockwise a full circle. And yep, still seems to do OK. And let's also just check that it still works, doesn't kind of throw us any errors if we do the, um, uh, the edge case of turning to the direction we're already facing. And yep, that looks pretty happy. So that there is now my turn to function. I declare a constant, which is the error that I'm going to allow. I declare a variable that's going to hold my uh, my error from the direction that I want to be facing. And inside my loop at every stage, I get what my error is. If my error is bigger than the maximum error, error that I'm going to allow, then I work out a power that I'm going to apply to the motors depending on the size of that error. So as I get close to the target, the power I apply to the motors comes down. Uh, I work out which direction I need to apply um, that, that turn power to the motors, whether it's to make me, make me uh, accelerate clockwise or accelerate anti-clockwise. Uh, and if I've got into the range where, OK, no, I am now close enough to target, I turn off the motors. And I do that uh, while my error is bigger than the error that I'm going to allow. Or while I've got some angular velocity and my momentum is going to carry me too far over the error that I'm going to allow. Uh, and that is my turn to function. And in the next video, we'll have a look at how we use that uh, to uh, move from square to square. You know, well, what angle should we turn to?